Hi, and welcome to Module T105 of the Information Lab and Data Skills Tableau Data Skills Training Course. My name is Adam Ratcliffe, and I'm thrilled you're here. Let's learn together. In this module, you will learn about the Tableau Data Model. I will cover when to use joins, relationships, and blends, during which we'll get an understanding of the logical and physical layers in Tableau's data model. You can watch this module as a standalone training or as part of our Tableau Data Skills series. If you find this training useful and would like us to help you and your team make sense of your business data, please reach out at info at theinformationlab.co.uk. Please check the description for links to this module's training materials and also for other useful links that will help you level up your data skills. And remember to click subscribe to be the first to know about our new videos. Okay, let's jump right in and get started. What is a data model? A data model describes how data tables are connected and arranged. This is where you will see the data model for your Tableau workbook. This is known as the data pane. On the left, you will see the data sources you have connected to, and on the right, you see the tables you have brought in and below, you see a preview of that table. As soon as your first table is dropped into this area, you have created a data model within Tableau. Before we go ahead and look at this in Tableau, let's go through some key concepts, relationships and the logical layer. The Tableau data model is made of two layers. This layer is known as the logical layer. On this layer, it displays logical tables, and this is where you perform relationship connections between logical tables. You can see here that the sales table is related to the product table through matching product code fields. Relationships. Relationships look like this. Logical tables connected together by little noodles. They connect by choosing matching fields between the logical tables. They do not actually join the tables together. They just tell Tableau how the tables are related. This means that when creating a visualization, Tableau brings in the right data from the right tables at the right aggregation handling the level of detail for you. The key points about relationships is that they preserve all data and do not cause any duplication of data. Joins take place on the physical layer between physical tables. The results of join operations on the physical layer leads to a fixed logical table on the logical layer. You can see here that when you right click on a logical table, you can open it up to get to the physical table on the physical layer. It's from here that you'd create a join. But if you're having a bit of trouble about these layers, take a look at this visual representation of these two layers. We have two logical tables on the logical layer connected together by a relationship, and each of those logical tables has within it multiple physical tables displayed on the physical layer below, connected by joints, indicated by the Venn diagram symbols between them. Let's talk about joins. This is what a join looks like in Tableau. The shading of the Venn diagram describes the type of join. The middle shading indicates an inner join, that is where only the rows that are matched through the join clause are shown in the final logical table. In this example, it is where only the product codes that appear in both physical tables would appear in the logical table. The left circle shaded indicates a left join. In this join type, all the data from the sales table is included, but only the data in the product table that has a matching product code with the sales table would be included. This means if a row does not meet the join condition from the left table, it will be shown anyway. But if a row in the right table does not meet the join condition, then it will not be shown. You can also have a right join, which is the same, but in the other direction. The final type of join is a full outer join, in which the Venn diagram is fully shaded. In this join type, all rows from both tables are shown in the logical table, regardless of match for the join condition, though you will need to set up a legitimate join condition. Let's take a look at an example of where joins may provide some issues. In our first table, we have state and population, indicating the population of California and New York. Our second table has these different events happening in those two different states. These tables have been joined together on the state field. Can you see how this leads to some misleading data? If you were to put state on the rows shelf and look at the population, Tableau is going to sum up the four instances of California, saying 40 million, and return a result of 120 million people. This is an example of how you have to be careful when doing joins, be aware of your measures and how they may be duplicated. Okay, let's go over what we've learned about joins. Joins connect multiple physical tables together using a join clause to create a logical table with a fixed combination of data. We've been over the various join types indicated by the Venn diagrams. You've seen how some joins can lead to duplication of data. Joins may also cause unmatched measures to be dropped. They also support scenarios that require a single logical table of data such as for extract filters and aggregation. Let's jump into Tableau and take a look at these different operations in action. Before we get started, if you want to follow along, you'll find a link to the data used in this demo in the description below. Feel free to pause here and get that ready. Here in the data pane, we can see our data on the left 
and an empty canvas for our data on the right. First, we are going to demo setting up a relationship. Go ahead and drag in the sales domain table into the white space like this. You'll see an overview of the fields of the table below on the left and a preview of the table itself on the right. To create a relationship, we will now drag the product table to the right side of the sales table. You'll see a little noodle appear as it approaches. Go ahead and drop that there. See now on the lower part of the screen, a window has come up to set up a relationship. It says here, select matching fields to create this relationship. It also has a link above to find out more about how relationships differ from joins. So if in the future you're doing this and you want to learn more about the differences, you're welcome to come back here and learn more, or you can this link and go directly to Tableau for more information. Go ahead and set up some matching fields here. We're going to select the product code. So if you click on this drop down, start typing in a product code. On that, do the same uh, for this side. Product code equals product code. You then can update this a preview of the table there. But before we talk about any of these differences between relationships and joins, let's look at how we put joins together. So still on the data pane here. I've cleared off the product table, so we just have the sales domain table left here in the white space, and we're going to show how we set up a join. First thing we're going to do once we have this sales domain table in here is we're going to right click and select open here. This brings us from the logical layer to the physical layer. We are now on the physical layer of Tableau's data model. Therefore, the table that we're viewing here is actually a physical table. Now, like before, we're going to drag the product table in. And we're going to drop it to the right side of the sales table. Once you've dropped that in, we see a Venn diagram that we were speaking about earlier has appeared. And automatically, it has set itself to an inner join, just the crossover of the Venn diagram being shaded. We click into the Venn diagram, we see where we indicate the matching fields and how this has been done automatically in this case. As you can see, this is also where you change the type of join from inner to left to right or to full outer. For now, we're going to keep it on inner. We're going to change this automatic join clause between category fields to the product code clause that we had set up in the relationship. If we go over here to the right, we can X to get rid of this. And then you see you get an exclamation mark and a blank Venn diagram indicating that there is no join clause. Go ahead and select product code from both sides. There we go. So now we have put both a relationship and a join together. Let's see how they look on a worksheet. Here we have a blank worksheet with our relationship set up as before. First thing we're going to do is bring in category from the product table onto the row shelf. See we have 14 rows appearing. You can check this quickly by looking down here at the bottom left. Next, add in sales row count onto the columns to make a bar chart as so. Lastly, we're going to bring in platform from the sales table onto the row shelf next to category. And see what happens here is there are only two categories from the product table that have a corresponding platform in the sales table. What we're seeing here is Tableau dynamically creating an inner join between the tables and showing those platforms that match across the tables. But with relationships, what we can do is view all the categories in the product table even if there is no match, i.e. we can see all the categories even if they don't have a corresponding platform. We can do this by going up here to Analysis, down into table layout, show empty rows. Now we have our 14 categories back. This is once again Tableau dynamically creating a new join, a left join, where all the data is preserved from the product table. This is the power of a relationship. It allows the user to put whatever data they want on Canvas and have Tableau dynamically manage. If we wanted to view the same thing but with a join, go back to the data pane, then right click and remove the products table as a logical table. Right click the sales table and open it to get to the physical layer. Bring in the product table as before. Click on the Venn diagrams to edit the join. Just as before, get rid of this category equals category. And we'll put in product code on both sides. Now X out of the physical layer back onto the logical layer. You see we have one logical table with this join Venn diagram symbol indicating that there are joins happening inside the logical table. If we go back to the worksheet, 
can see that our 14 categories go back to just two as before. And that's even with show empty rows selected. There's no way to show them with a join, with an inner join like this. You have to make it a left join. But well, in this case, it would be a right join. This is a key difference between relationships and joins, whereby the relationship was able to dynamically switch between the view of just two categories, an inner join, and the view of all 14 categories, a left join. For joins, I'd have to go back into the physical layer and change the join type to see it in the other view. Now we've seen joins on the physical layer and related tables on the logical layer. We've seen how there are different join types and some of the benefits of the relationships. So let's compare these two ways of connecting data. Firstly, consider that relationships don't have join types. Instead, when using a relationship, joins are created dynamically in analysis, fitting the needs of the view you are creating. This means that full detail of the tables is always maintained when using relationships, no loss of data. We've seen that with certain join types, a join operation can drop unmatched values between tables, and they can also duplicate values if the two tables being joined are at different levels of granularity, like our states and events tables example from earlier. Joins also allow you to use just one single logical table containing within it many joined physical tables, which is useful for extract filters and aggregation. Relationships do a great job at maintaining detail in tables and allowing for a dynamic environment. However, it can make your data model messy if you have many logical tables. Using joins can cut down on your number of fields and logical tables in your data model. An optimized use of joins could mean you have only one logical table in the model made up of many joined physical tables. Joins can also be used as a filter between tables. The dropping of unmatched rows as a filter can be a more efficient way of filtering the data. There is one more way of connecting data in Tableau, known as blending. Blending is the third way data connects in Tableau. Unlike joins and relationships, blending happens on the worksheet. Let's jump right into Tableau to see what this looks like. Here we are on a blank worksheet. The data tab up here on the left, see our sales domain table already here. Blend data sources together, we're going to add in a new data source. So to do that, we're going to click on this cylinder with a plus here, which is the new data source button. We're going to get a menu that might be familiar when you first open a Tableau workbook and connect to data the first time. We're going to go and find our product table here, like we've been connected to in the past. B that's going to be in here. And just here. This is going to take us back to the data pane. And it's going to show us, as if we dragged it in from the beginning, singular product logical table there. We're not going to do anything here. We're just going to go straight back to our blending worksheet. What you can see now is that on the top left in this data pane, we have the product table and we have the sales table. To demonstrate the blending of these data sources, we're going to select the product table and bring in category to the rows shelf. First thing to note here is that a blue check mark has appeared by the product data source cylinder. This indicates that this is our primary data source. We then select the sales table, see these chain link icons next to the fields. In this case, the category field has a connected chain, indicating that that's how these tables are linked. These links can be clicked on to create a link or to undo a link between tables. To leave it as it is, connected by category, if we then put segment, Next the category onto the rows shelf. You see, we get the same view as from relationships when showing empty rows, i.e., a left join. Blending only creates left joins, and it does this on a worksheet by worksheet basis. For each worksheet could be connected by different fields within the two tables, but it would always be created a left join between the tables. You can see that as soon as data from the second data source is put onto the worksheet, a green check mark has appeared next to the second data source indicating it as the secondary data source. You may want to play around with primary and the secondary data source as these are left joins being made. Means all the data from the left table is being maintained, whereas the table on the right, in this case the secondary data source, not all of that data is being maintained, only that which joins with the left table, the primary data source. So that's our blending demo. Now let's have a look at some differences between blending and relationships. With blending, the connection between your tables can be dynamic for each worksheet, 
This brings some similarities to how relationships also operate dynamically and how they connect the data. But let's have a look at some differences. While they both connect data dynamically, with blending, you can only create left joins. Another downside of blends is that you cannot publish the blended data as a data source as it is different for each worksheet. Blending also isn't performant on large data sets as the connection is computed as part of the queries. The secondary data source in blending will always be the one aggregated due to the nature of the join type being a left join, although you can easily switch which table is the primary and secondary data source. Blending is the only way of connecting data that allows you to change how the tables are linked for each worksheet. With the chain links, you can have multiple worksheets with the same two data sources all connected up in different ways. Now we've seen joins, relationships, and blending in Tableau. We've seen how they operate between the logical and physical layers and how some offer more dynamic data management than others. Let's go over what we've covered in this module. Tableau's data model is made of a logical layer and a physical layer. The logical layer has logical tables, and logical tables can be related together using Tableau's relationship connections. Logical tables can also house within them multiple physical tables, connected together by joins and also unions. Using joins risks loss of detail or duplication of measures. This can be bad for aggregation. So joins are good if you want just one logical table or if you know exactly the level of detail you need and can keep track of that aggregation. While relationships maintain all detail in all tables and use dynamic joins in the view, provide whatever level of detail and aggregation you need. So it is important to keep track of your related logical tables so as to avoid a messy, overcrowded data model. Blending was the final way of connecting data we looked at. We saw that we could make a new connection on each worksheet, but these connections were all limited to the functionality of left join behavior. Blending may not be performant or server friendly as you cannot publish blended data sources, but it has its place as a great tool for data exploration. Trying out different connections to see how best your data could come together using joins and relationships without having to keep returning to the data pane to change them. Thank you for watching this module. I've had a great time teaching you. In this module, we covered the Tableau data model. We've looked at the logical and physical layers, joins, relationships, and finally blending. I hope you're able to put what you learned in this module into practice soon. If you want to continue with our Tableau data skills training course, the next module is Tableau 106, Viz Design Best Practices. Jump straight to it by clicking on the next video thumbnail on the right. And if you'd like us to help you and your team boost your data skills, please reach out at info at the information lab .co Lastly, remember to subscribe to this channel to get notified when we release new videos. Look forward to seeing you in our next session.